Welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be very interesting because in this video, I'm going to show you how to select your material and how to choose the best material for your project every single time. Today, we are diving into the world of sheet metal and specifically how we choose the right sheet metal for your project. Sheet metal may look very simple on outside, but it is really complicated because not choosing the right metal may make your project weak rusty or just very frustrating to work with if you are not choosing the right material to start. Please be sure to watch this video till the end and you will be a much better designer in sheet metal industry at the end of this video. Grab a notepad and grab your experience. We are going to dive into every single topic that may affect the choosing the right material for your sheet metal project. So before we dive into the metals, what and why, let's understand what your project needs. Ask yourself these key questions when you are deciding what material to pick. So question number one is what is the purpose? Is that a mailbox? Does it need to withstand a higher pressure? Does it need to withstand a higher force? Or is it just going on a decorative wall hanging? The second question you will be asking is what kind of stress it will go under? What is the end purpose of your project? The third question you will be asking yourself is how is that going to be shaped? There are many methods that you can design or you can shape your metal with, but what method is going to give you the most benefit? After knowing this answer, it is very important for you to consider the properties of the material. All right, so now let's talk metal. Here are some key properties considered while choosing the metal for your sheet metal projects. Number one, strength. Now, how much weight or force your project is going to handle? Ideally, if you want to go for a strength, steel is a really good choice, but then it comes to choosing which steel to choose, stainless steel or mild steel. Now, sometimes aluminum is really light. So when it comes to just decoration pieces, aluminum is a really good choice. Now, second thing that you will consider for the properties is how the metal can be formed which is called formability of metal. It is very easy for aluminum to bend, but it's equally hard to bend stainless or mild steel, while still requires more force. Another good property to consider for metal is corrosion resistance. You need to understand where your project is going to be used in the end-to-end -end environment. For example, is it going to have a lot of hygiene? For your hospitals, if you're designing stainless steel table for your hospital, I would say stainless steel 316 is a really good choice because it has a really antibacterial qualities. On the other hand, if you are just designing a simple decorative piece, then just use mild steel or aluminum because mild steel can be powder coated very easily and aluminum is another one that is really light and can be polished into a really beautiful shapes. Now, next thing that you need to consider is how you are going to join it. So to join the material, weldability property comes into the place, which is a very critical part when you are joining two metals. For example, it is very easy to join two steels or two stainless steels, but it is a bit difficult to join aluminum with aluminum. It requires more skill and really high quality labor. Next mechanical property that you can consider is machining. How is that going to be machined? Some of the parts are really easy to machine, for example, parts made with aluminum are really good and easy to machine. You will see most of the manifolds are made in aluminum, but on the other hand, steel is really hard to machine. So it will take more time, more efforts and more resources to machine those parts. So you need to consider all these methods, all these things before you design your project. One of the very interesting thing that you will know, SS316 is way harder to machine than SS304 because of the molybdenum and nickel in the surface it is it becomes harder for machinists to machine ss316 one of the other property that you need to consider is aesthetic it means how it's going to look is it going to be a really beautiful or architectural piece if it is then you can consider aluminium stainless or copper as one of the preferred material to cut with now you know what are the properties of the material you need to understand what are the material that is available in sheet metal. Now, let me tell you what are the basic choices for sheet metal. One of the most common choices is steel. It is a really good 
to choose for strength and durability. It comes in various grades starting from G250 all the way to really high tensile grades. For example, if you are using your steel just as a litter box, you don't need a really thick or really strong material. But if you are using the same steel for agricultural use, where it is going to use a lot of impact and a lot of wear and tear, you might want to consider high tensile strength. Let's understand stainless steel. Stainless steel is nothing but a steel which has really high resistance to the corrosion, which means you can use stainless steel in highly exposed environment, for example, high salt water environment, or sometimes under the sea or near the high chlorine content like swimming pools. Because stainless steel looks shiny and silvery, it looks really beautiful. And because of that, lots of people use stainless steel in kitchen appliances. And sometimes you can see, if you go into the restaurant, you will see stainless steel bench tops and kitchen tops made out of stainless. You can find a lot of different stainless steel because of this beautiful quality of looking really good. For example, if you want a nice linear finish, you go for number four finish. If you want to see yourself in the mirror, you go for stainless steel BA finish. And there's one more, the most common use to be series for your project. After knowing the material qualities, let's understand the thickness and how it impacts the material. It is a common sense that if you go thicker, it's going to be really difficult to deal with. For example, it is very easy to fold a piece of paper, but it is going to be a bit difficult to fold a cardboard. After considering that, when you have two different thicknesses, it is really hard for the people who are working on the floor to double handle the material. So in this case, they have to cut one set of thickness first and after that, they will cut the second set of thickness. So every time you change the thickness, you will be charged with setup charge and material handling charge for your project, which is really frustrating. If you dug deep into this material thicknesses and requirement, if there is no such need of two different thicknesses, I would prefer make everything out of as less material as you can use, as less thickness as you can use. Because changing a material thickness may require changing the setup on the, on the laser, changing a setup on the tools and changing a setup on the press break. So these are the things that you need to consider for your project before you design anything that is going to be in a sheet metal workshop. So. Choosing the right sheet metal is all about matching the material properties to your project's need and don't be afraid to experiment with a different type of materials to find out what suits your purpose for the project. Now for more info, you can always comment on this video and let me know what are your thoughts on your projects or what are the roadblocks that you are facing in your projects. So I will try to make another video on that to help you understand better about material handling and sheet metal workshops.